Hello and welcome. Today we are driving a 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee L Overland Trim 4x4. I would like to thank Newport Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram for allowing me to review this vehicle. Their link is down in the description below and they are located in Newport, Rhode Island. This Grand Cherokee L is finished in a velvet red pearl coat and this is the new generation. This comes in at about 6,700 pound total weight and costs $60,000. This does come with the V6 engine, being a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6, making 290 horsepower and 257 pound feet of torque. This is mated with an 8 speed shiftable automatic. This is a four-wheel drive model, and it does have 18 miles per gallon city, 25 on the highway, and 21 combined. This does ride on 20-inch alloy wheels on 265 tires, and it does have 6,200 pound towing capacity. Alrighty, let's take this for a spin. All right, so driving this Grand Cherokee, I am just driving in normal auto mode, but it does have a lot of drive modes, including rock, sand, mud, snow, auto, and sport. It does have some little paddle shifters on the rear of this steering wheel as well. And in just a moment, we will complete a zero to 60 test and a little braking test on here. So what I notice is uh, the gas pedal is a bit touchy in here, but the brake pedal is extremely touchy. It is such a firm brake pedal. There is almost no travel distance to it. Not that that's a bad thing in any way. It feels much sportier this way, but uh, I just didn't expect it to be so firm. It feels very good though. Uh, the steering in here, it may change a little bit depending on sport mode, but right now it feels a little bit heavy. Um, pretty direct steering, I like it. And uh, with very minimal wind noise and tire noise is a little louder than the wind noise in here. But uh, the 3.6 engine, we'll see how much, uh, how much grunt it really has with 290 horsepower and 257 pound feet of torque. Also, you do get a beautiful uh, rear view camera in here that can function as your rear view mirror. All right, so we will pop ourselves into sport mode here. No paddles and just floor it. All right, so there's 60. Brakes work very well. The brakes got the screech there a tiny bit. They work very, very well. Okay, let's check out the paddles. Okay. So we will do one more little test with those paddles in just a moment. They work pretty well. Uh, the engine really doesn't jerk too hard when you uh, use the paddles in here. And this does have a rotary dial shifter. Let's put it into reverse. Get your backup camera. I don't see a 360 camera though. I wish that were present. It has moving tracking lines though, so that's nice. All right, so we are in sport mode. Now let's just try with the paddles. Okay, so we are in one. Okay, it's not the quickest response. It's not meant to be. It's not a sports car by any means. Let's just do a little hard accelerate, moderate acceleration with the paddles. Okay, the engine doesn't sound too bad. It doesn't shift too bad. It seems to shift almost a little bit slower in uh, paddle mode in the lower gears than it does the higher gears. Higher gears, it seems to cooperate a bit better. And we will put it back into auto mode. All right, and we are back in drive. All right. The blinker sounds a little interesting in here. I like it. All right, so the engine really doesn't sound too bad. It, uh, yeah, for a V6, it's naturally aspirated. It, uh, it pulled okay. It has a little bit of a, a lower, a drop in the power band once you get up to the higher speeds, but overall it drives pretty nicely. Popping into sport. Let's see. Okay, I do notice a sharpening of the steering. So the steering gets a little bit heavier when you go into sport mode in here, which I, I like. It should do that. 
And uh, yeah, the interior in here, it's very, very nice. This car stickers for about $60,000. I think it's worth it. It really, it drives very well. It's a three row SUV. It's now a three row SUV, a little bit larger than the previous generation, but it really, really doesn't drive any differently. Body roll is not too bad. Uh, the ride's a little bit stiff. It's not bad. It, it has to be a little stiff because when it's a bigger vehicle with some body roll, you need to keep it a little stiff for safety. Yeah, overall, it's pretty good. It does have blind spot monitoring in here. It does have rear cross traffic alert. It does have lane departure warning and forward emergency collision braking. It has some nice features in here and I love this uh, camera mirror. It does have a panoramic sunroof in here, which is massive, it lets in so much light. And it does have power fold down rear third row seats. It does have heated and ventilated and massage seats for the driver and passenger up here. And it also does have heated rear seats with three levels with auto climate control and their own climate vents back there. It's really a pretty good package for the Overland. It's, uh, it's an upper trim, it's not the top trim though. There are a couple blank buttons such as one over there. And there is gonna be a couple just in the center here right there and right there. But uh, overall, I think it's a very nice package. And for $60,000, although it's expensive, Jeep has been hitting this upper market for the last couple of years. So uh, this they really are going all in with this because this used to, it's still a family SUV, but they used to hit a bit lower of a market down there. And uh, yeah, I think it, uh, I think it's a very nice package. That'll just about do it for this review of a 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee L Overland. Thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe, and take care.